Good morning, happy pot lovers. So I unloaded the kiln this morning and I didn't have a very good camera angle. So <clears throat> besides, in this light, I can give you a much better view of what's going on. So this is the refire we did on this mug because this part of the handle fused to one of the kiln posts. So we, I ground it off a little bit, not a lot, because I didn't want to weaken the handle much. And I reglazed it and it came out pretty good. I'm liking some of the blues here. This refire, a lot of the rutile came out in the floating blue. You can see the brown there. And the inside came out okay. I like the action in there. Let's see, that's a good angle right there. So you can see a lot of the drippy blue floating down inside. Okay, so this is on hazelnut clay, which I originally thought was dark brown, but it's not. So, all right, piece number one. Piece number two. This is a little, I call it a squash blossom kind of vase. I was just playing around on the wheel, and this is that... Um, accidental glaze that I made. You can see some places where it came out with the blue, but most of the places in this one it came out purple, and I think the thinner places came out blue, but the thicker places came out that purpley color. So, there is that one. I'm not sure I'm thrilled with it, but I don't hate it either. It'll probably grow on me. You can see the little pink dots in there with the blue. I am not a fan of brushing on glazes. All right. Next we have a little mixing bowl. Scramble up a couple of eggs in that. We've got Ginger's New Black on the outside, which came out nice and black there, but where I put it on thicker, it kind of got a matte color to it. So, and you can see where the blue glaze kind of melted down a little bit in there, but not a lot. Not a lot of movement on that. So, not bad, not great. This will go in my own cabinet. Unless somebody absolutely has to have it. Our cone packs. So, this was the top shelf. And it fused... fused to this little plate here so I'm gonna have to grind that off that's a sharp little edge so and then the plate this wasn't deep enough here and I glazed it and that fused to the shelf so I got to grind that off and I'm, I've got some shelf maintenance to do now I've got to do a little bit of cleaning that's kind of ugly and it's kind of sharp I cut my thumb on it this morning on pieces that were on the shelf so that's where that was right there. The cone went sideways. Go figure. Anyway, that shell fired correctly. And that's unfortunate because I was planning on using that little saucer underneath of the gravy boat, which is a pitcher. So this was our by my mark. This was the middle shelf. I marked them on the bottom. This was the top shelf. And this was the bottom shelf. So we did get a fairly consistent fire. The top shelf was a little bit cooler. I allowed more space between the bottom shelf and the middle shelf and between the middle shelf and the top shelf. 
So I hope that helped with more even heating. Those are our cone packs. Our witness cones. Now this one, I had refired this because it had a couple, one or two little pinholes right in the bottom of it. And now I've got a bajillion pinholes in this thing. I don't know if you can see that or not, but we have a lot of pinholing going on here. All through this one, which is unfortunate. And I think this was on the top shelf. And you can see where the black, and then we have the blue rutile over the black. Now I like the blue over the black. That gives some really interesting color. And the blue that was in here turned more brown this time. I think the rutile, the, the floating blue, likes hotter temperatures. All right, this was my wonky little vase. And we did Ginger's New Black on the bottom, and then the floating blue overlapped it there. And there was a little run of Ginger's New Black in there, and then it was just floating blue up here and inside. And it fired properly. This was a base that I overworked the clay. It's on B mix. And I overworked the clay and it started going wonky on me. And I was going to cut it in half, but then I looked at it and I was like, you know, I kind of like that form. So it's going to go in my learning curve collection that sits in my china closet. And I will keep it to remind me of my roots because we all had to start somewhere and not everything turned out how we planned it. But you have to try things, push the limits. Some of them will work, some of them won't. But you learn from every one of them. That's really cool in there. I like the way that did that. Okay. Another vase. So this was a refire because I didn't like the way that the two different blues were playing. This is a little bit better. This softened up some. It's not such a stark contrast. When the turquoise goes on in thin spots, it kind of looks like clouds floating in the sky, and that's kind of cool, I think. Anyway, there's the inside of that. I don't know how well you can see with the light, but there's a lot of pinky purpley going on in there. All right, next. We really have some unfortunate pinholing going on in this one. There's a big one right there, which the clay is vitrified, so this can actually be used because you can clean that. It's those little pinholes like that that are hard to clean. I like the way the turquoise over the Lynette's opal works. That really creates a nice effect, and I'll be doing that in the future. The Lynette's opal painted on leaves thin spots. Some of it is kind of clear. And then on the outside, we have Lynette's opal over turquoise here. And that's kind of a cool effect too, but I like this better. And then I made it a point to put this on thicker. There's a little pinhole there, a couple of pinholes there. And I think I'm going to mix up another batch of this Val's turquoise. And instead of 
the Gersley Borate. I'm going to try a uh, Ferro Frit 3124 and see if I can get the same color without getting the pinholes because that is annoying. And I did a 10 minute hold on this load and then I did a slow cool. I uh, did that by bypassing my kiln sitter, pushing the button back in, and uh, turning the bottom burners back on for a little while. First on high and then on medium. So high for about 10 minutes for my temperature hold, and then medium. Hmm, I'm going to have to smooth that out there. That's... Let's get a little sharp spot on there. Let's see how that is better. Okay, so anyway, I did it <clears throat> 10 minutes on high, and then I did uh, three hours on medium. So, this is our butter dish that we refired. Picked up a little black off the shelf, I think. I don't see any pinholing on the outside. And this is Lynette's opal over the turquoise. And then on the inside, looks like we eliminated our pinholes on both that part and that part. A little bit of kiln wash on there. I'll clean that off. And a little bit of blood on there from where I cut my finger this morning. But that will wash off. Blood, sweat, and tears. So our pinholes in here are gone. Our pinholes in here are gone. So this is now a usable butter dish. And it will be for sale. It fits on like that. You put, fill it with water about up to here. And you put your butter in here. And this will hold a full stick of butter. And then when you're not using your butter, you do that and the butter, the water um, creates a seal, keeps the air from getting to the butter and oxidizing it and causing it to spoil. And then when you want to serve it, you pick it up and set it on your table like that. There's room for your butter knife to lay on the side. And it makes a nice serving dish. And it's easy to pass around the table. Okay. Butter dish number two. This was also a success. Our pinholes are gone in here. And the holes from where we did the stilts. Yeah, I know it's a little bit wonky there. I'll clean that little bit of kiln wash off of there. No pinholes here. No pinholes here. And no... There's one there, but it is sealed. I think that's just a little bump in the clay. So this is available to use also to sell. Make a nice Christmas gift for somebody. And this is the Val's Turquoise and Ginger's New Black. So there's our second butter dish. Now we have a little wider, shallower bowl, and I did the experimental glaze on here, and I only did one coat, so you can see where it's thicker, we get that purpley color, where it's thinner, we get the blue color. I'm not loving that, but it's okay. The other thing I wanted to see was how does the Lynette's Opal play with it. So I think if I have a good solid coat of the Sing in the Blues and then put the Lynette's Opal over it, I can get some pretty cool effects on that. But I don't think I'll purposely make that glaze again. I'll just use up what I've got. I'll maybe add a little bit more color to it and just play and see what I get. Anyway, again, I'm not a fan of brushing glazes on. I would much rather have dipped this, but 
I'll have to make a bigger batch and that way I can dip it. Righty. Pie plate. So this one is floating blue on the inside and again we got some pinholing and this was nice and thick on here I did several coats and then we have Ginger's new black with floating blue over it on the outside and that blue floated almost down to the bottom didn't it I like the floating blue over the black for sure. It really gives some cool effects. I'm not as thrilled with that, but it is what it is. And this was floating blue in here, although you wouldn't know it, would you? And floating blue overlapping out to here, and then Ginger's new black. This was one of my very first plates that I deliberately, well, I don't, didn't deliberately do this as a plate. I think it started out it was going to be a pie plate and didn't quite make it. So, and this was on buff stoneware. And again, you can see quite a bit of pinholing in here. Okay, that was it for this kiln load, folks. And so we learned several things. Um, one, I think if I put my shelves a little farther apart, I get more even heat in the kiln, which makes sense because the more you put in it, the more that it uh, has to heat up. So. Anyway, when I loaded it last time, my shelves were a little closer together and it burned hotter on the shelves that were closer together. So uh, I didn't get the overheating shelf this time. Although that doesn't mean there weren't some spots in the kiln that overheated that didn't have a cone pack sitting there. Uh, I didn't have an underfired shelf because I didn't go quite as high up and I put an empty shelf on top to kind of hold the heat in. I think that worked well. So, um, also learned that I need to up my glaze quantities so that I can dip instead of brushing. And at the very least, I'll pour. So, anyway, that's it for today. Until tonight when I put handles on the mugs that I did yesterday. So I have a couple of these guys. And this is actually the brown clay. And... That will get a handle that is similar to this. Little tankards that I made. I've got five of them. Hopefully all five will make it through the firing process. And I have to clean these handles up a little bit because this clay is really wet. So it sticks to your hands and it's a little bit hard to work the handles and stuff. But I'm liking the shapes of them so far. And I'm liking the fact that I got five that are relatively the same. Oops, I don't want to mess them up. Okay, that's it for now, folks. Have a good day and stay centered.